Hi, this is your host Tolim Bharti and welcome to my brand new episode of T3M or topic of this month. And topic of this month is data. And today we have with us Neil Palmer, partner at Carry Group. Neil, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. If you look at the whole evolution of, of course, from traditional IT to cloud native or Kubernetes centric world, how you have seen data evolved, how you've seen the evolution of data uh, in, in this world? I think we've all seen it, certainly within the last 10 years or so, just the sheer explosion of growth in the amount of data that's not only being generated, um, but that's also accessible to organizations. Uh, we've seen um, some of the struggles organizations have had around um, cataloging and accessing the data. And we've seen some of the struggles um, organizations have had of actually proving the value out of having some of those, um, you know, what are now becoming fairly significantly sized data lakes that are out there. Um, I think there's certainly ongoing challenges, um, but there's ongoing benefits as well to what some of the firms are doing. Um, and particularly when you see um, initiatives like um, things coming out of Snowflake and BigQuery about being able to share data sets across larger organizations, uh, controlling both um, accessibility and security around the data sets that are being consumed within your organization has really become quite a useful tool that's um, available to people. We are not only consuming huge amount of data, but we are also creating massive amount of data. And of course, a lot of modern businesses, they are built around users generating massive amount of data. How do you see organizations are dealing with this uh, data? I think we're starting to see the emergence of um, what I've been what I've been advocating as a new uh, a new dimension to systems engineering and a new d dimension to systems design, which is the economic value of the information that you're trying to either produce or consume from the system that you're building. And and so the analogy I use is that you know from the financial world, a, an overnight mark to market is always an overnight mark to market. That doesn't change. Um, but a risk calculation might change based on, you know, the volatility in the market on any given day. And so you're scaling within the application. You may choose to scale up if the market's having a particularly volatile day and produce that information on, you know, a 10 second basis as opposed to an hourly basis. Um, so I think, you know, again, having organizations being able to think about uh, what the economic benefit of that information is to them across the board allows them to put a cost benefit analysis over both storing and consuming that data. One of the most critical aspect of data, which goes beyond just creating and consuming is backup and recovery if something goes wrong. While cloud, public cloud does take care of a lot of stuff, it's not a magical place that takes care of almost everything. Users still have to deal with some of these issues and challenges that are related to data. Uh, talk about these challenges, these complexities. Nothing is ever a magical button for anything, right? Unfortunately, as much as we would like it to be otherwise. Uh, look, I mean, as we've moved from, you know, significantly over the past few years from sort of data center native approaches to cloud native approaches, um, I, I think we've seen a, a, a pivot in um, away from traditional sort of backup and DR to more a view, more of a viewpoint around resiliency and scalability within the applications. And, and by that, I, I, you know, backup and DR for a lot of organizations used to be a very static sort of semi-regular processes that would happen. It'd be expensive. You'd end up with a lot of storage sitting on tape somewhere that was never really reused and was of no ongoing value to the organization. Um, I, I think, you know, from the pandemic, um, from a people and process perspective, uh, everybody going remote kind of solved the people side of the disaster recovery equation. Uh, and I think with a lot of the cloud native applications now, you can bake in uh, or, or improve on the need for DR by uh, backup. I'm sorry, by using, um, say, multi-regionable storage for your for your data, right? And so you, you, you're not just doing backup; you're gaining the benefit of scalability and resiliency within your applications, rather than just you know sticking something on tape to gather dust somewhere. I cannot stop drawing a parallel with the whole shift let movement, especially when it comes to uh, security, or if you look at the whole DevOps movement. If you look at data. What kind of cultural shift you are seeing there? Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think in, uh, you bring up an excellent point with the security, um, but I, I don't think any um, application developers teams can work in isolation anymore and just sit there and, and churn out business logic. They have to be conscious of, um, conscious of the data and where they're consuming it from and where they're providing it to. 
and, and what those benefits are. I mean, again, um, you know, from a security and availability perspective, it's all a function of risk, which is a function of, you know, either reputational or financial. Um, and so there's no technical reason why, for, for the most part, for anything that is essentially cloud enabled, why you can't have something be, you know, available to the number of nines that makes sense for your business. And how you're seeing this whole ecosystem, which is about projects, uh, vendors, how is this whole ecosystem evolving to help customers wherever they are in their journey so that they don't get overwhelmed with this cloud native complexity and you know we help them wherever they are in their journey i wonder about the complexity versus you know the visibility of the problem um i think with data centers a lot of people didn't weren't aware didn't know um and so with cloud um that that responsibility has moved sort of to the left or whichever way you want to look at it in terms of the engineering teams. I think that's important. Um, you know, I think we still see kind of traditional backups on relational databases and things like that. But then when you have some of the large scale cloud native databases, that multi-regionality, you know, removes that problem for you, um, which I find, you know, to be a great advantage in terms of what's happening. And But you look at the scale of some of these datas anyway, when you're talking, you know, several petabytes of data, um, having a static copy of that sitting around is, you know, expensive and, and not terribly useful. If you look at some of the discussion we had today, some of the concern related to data that we discussed today, are they relevant to only large enterprises or large companies that are dealing with massive amount of data, or is it relevant to any company that is dealing with sizable amount of data? Obviously, the scale of your problem introduces complexities within it itself, but all organizations have this problem uh i think you know the 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 consumption of data across uh any given organization and and through to its you know third party providers or its third party clients um has become more and more critical um you know again i come back to the the snowflake data set sharing i think that solved an awful lot of problems for people by providing essentially iam and access controls around what was previously a series of fairly complex batch jobs that would run at obscure sets of times of the day who were the scripts were understood by one or two people uh whereas you know now from again security perspective you've got um, easily controllable access to the data that your clients or your providers need. Of course, if you look at the traditional IT data backup recovery, that market is very, very mature. But if you look at the cloud native Kubernetes and world, how mature is data backup and recovery market in the cloud native space? Yeah, I think we've come a long way. I mean, I see um, far less sort of resistance to the idea of having multi-regional data sets within your, within your systems. I mean, it, for us, it is a... For the most part, and again, it depends on the environment that we're talking about, you know, dev versus QA versus, you know, integration versus production. But for production workloads, um, you know, multi-region is the, is the de facto requirement. Now, whether it's multi-region within, say, the US or multi-region, you know, on a global basis, then you get into the broader questions around, you know, data protection and legality. And it's not a technical question so much as, uh, as a business and, and, and law question. Um, but, I, but I think for the most part, the, uh, the production workload, it's, it's not a question we see coming up anymore, that that availability is required. Now, testing and making sure that the systems work on the multi-regional capability is, is probably a slightly different matter. Um, and, and as we've discussed, you know, sort of the, the advent of the chaos engineering coming out of the Netflix, um, side of the world has really helped organizations embrace that concept of failure from the get go and the need to test for resiliency from the very beginning, rather than using a traditional disaster recovery mode where, you know, once a year or once every six months, they unplug stuff and hope that it still worked. As we talked about cultural aspect earlier, I also want to talk about uh, what are companies doing to build a culture that is prepared for failure? We talk about things like chaos engineering. A lot of practices are there where teams are ready when something goes wrong, they can recover quickly. Talk about the cultural aspect. Yeah, we um, I, we see slightly less of it than I would have thought at this point. Um, I think organizations are still somewhat struggling to adopt to it. I think there's a lot of um, pressure within the current economic environment to be constantly delivering business value. 
which for a lot of folks can tend to mean, you know, new features, uh, new capabilities. Um, but addressing, you know, some organizations addressing technical debt tends to, um, in a very human nature, get pushed down in terms of prioritization. Uh, but it's when you hit those failure points, as you invariably do within within the cloud, that the, you know, the need to consistently invest in that kind of uh, resiliency engineering becomes becomes apparent. Uh, and we do see organizations that have, you know, they have an engineer hour budget that says, you know, 20 percent of every sprint or whatever it is we're doing is invested in resiliency engineering. Now, let's talk about how is Carrier Group helping customers in their journey yeah, so Carrick is focused on um, app modernization and platform engineering, um, helping organizations move from data center native to, to cloud native. Um, so a lot of the work we do, particularly on the platform engineering side, is is creating these resilient platforms and the pipelines that the developers will then use to build out their systems and applications. And so, you know, um, accessibility to Kubernetes clusters that are multi-regional or, and will, you know, scalable, sorry, not multi-regional, um, you know, uh, Kubernetes clusters that will, um, th- that have the appropriate level of scalability, failover, et cetera. Um, CICD, CICD pipelines that then, you know, have the SecOps built into them. Um, you know, data tagging, um, audit trails for the data. So people understand that as the data moves through the application, even through the build systems, where it's coming from and where it's going to. And, and hopefully making these tool sets, you know, within putting them in the hands of the developers so that they can focus on the business capabilities they need to, uh, they need to, but at the same, same time, um, you know, give the organization the, um, the capabilities they need around, you know, the resiliency um, and the auditability for many, for many aspects, particularly if you're a regulated environment. Neil, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about data and of course share your insights, how this whole uh, ecosystem field is evolving. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Swapnil, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.